Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good evening, where, whenever, whenever that would be, depends on where you live in the world. This is Play Prime Podcast. This is our first episode, so uh, bear with us because <laughs> excuse our professionalism because things might get like weird sometimes. So, uh, my name is Kumpali Putibinyo, or you can call me Ku for short. I will be your host today. And in our first episode, I have invited some one of the uh, most ep- experienced, I would say, developer in in Thailand industry, because he was here for quite some time, and his latest title, latest game, have been announced recently. So we'll have him to talk about the game, and maybe you get to know a little bit about him. So. His name, we call him Ajahn J, uh, or J. He is Mr. Saran Pat Siri Wiwatana. Hello, everyone. All right. So thank you very much, uh, Kunku, for having me here. And thank you, everyone, uh, that is listening online right now. And everyone that is going to be streaming this afterward. Uh, I'm Jay. Yes. Uh, I am, kind of guess, game director of uh, Revolution Industry Studio, a very new studio, uh, and this is our first title. But I've been working in the game industry for some time. I wouldn't say that uh, I'm very experienced. I mean, this is an industry where experience helps somewhat, but also does not help somewhat because things change kind of quickly. Mm. Uh, I've got to unlearn a lot of things from like a couple of years ago. And yeah, uh, even the launch of this newest title, uh, newest title, uh, Airship Academy. It's I, I have to relearn a lot of things that I, I I I did some time ago when I released my previous title. So yeah, we we'll talk about that later today. But thank you for having me. Uh, that should be the first short introduction. Okay, sure. Uh, before we uh, dive deep into the details of your new title. So maybe you should maybe you should like introduce yourself to us some more. Like, who are you and what your previous work, and how how long you've been here in the in the industry? All right. So, well, maybe I'll take the second question first. Okay. Sure. Uh, I've been working I've been working around here for like as in Thai game industry for the last fifteen years. Uh, so to speak, I've. I've already long forgotten what actually compels me to be a game developer, <laughs> but yeah, I I, <laughs> I can I can kind of remember how it begins though. Mm. Uh, as in, like I uh, I traveled to Bangkok on train, like back back in the day when planes were expensive. Right? Oh, that was classic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I I put everything I have in uh, on a train with me and I came to Bangkok to rent a place and look for look for job in game industry. Uh, I would say a lot of things compelled me to do that. I can't remember clearly anymore what, what happened. There's a lot about like uh, inheriting family business. There's a lot about like uh, social pressure. There's a lot about like what I want to do with my life. Uh, actually, like I would just came out of being a monk for three months mm. and I was asking myself quite a lot what to do with the life as of that point from then on. And yeah, I don't really know uh, the origin of all this, but that, that is what happened. And I I went to work right away, kind of like the, the first thing that I did was I like Google like uh, uh, game development development job there. Google was a thing already back then. It, it's, it's not as good as it is now, but it's fine stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, so <laughs> game development job, Bangkok, and I didn't, I, 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 I end up didn't get a game development job actually. I was like uh I got the uh got the job as a forum moderator for for like an I think it's a German company that hosts a uh MMO RPG forum. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I I got a job of like uh nowadays you would call you would call these kind of people like uh what do you call again moderator, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The forum moderator was a thing back then. Yep, as well. So I I get to put out flames. I uh, clear out issue between like other moderators, and 
I find content online and I post and sometimes I have to write some of those on my own. Uh, I did that for a year and then, uh, well, while looking for the actual game development job in the meantime. Uh, yeah, and eventually, like, after that, I, well, I got a testing job and then I got project management job and then I got studio management job. I mean, like, I, 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 keep, I keep coming up a notch every time I mm. every time I shaped my career until like I found my first studio with my Danish friends mm. uh, that was like eight years ago uh, it's called pocket play lab at first and then it was changed to play lab later on uh, we sold the company six years ago uh, mainly because like all of us didn't quite agree on what to move uh, what to do next after after our success uh, juice cube so back in like back in 2013 14 like uh our company was growing really fast we made a lot of money from mobile games uh but yeah in in, in terms of like globally we are not as competitive as the market leader uh we were making casual games back then uh and now it's going to come to the first question my previous titles mm -hmm. so most of the stuff i work on uh casual games mm. basically like mastery stuff so we have this brand back then called uh called the cube brand uh it's a cute animation character that that fit into like your your standard like mesh tree board like if you play uh candy crush saga or anything like that yeah we we we'll ha we have uh, we have grids and then we will have these characters on a board uh you switch them you swap them you connect them and then they would like happily jump and explode and turn into a bomb or something like that. Y you know the drill. Everybody play this kind of game. So yeah, we, we were making a lot of that up until like 2016 before we uh, starting to go out our own merry way. And then after that, I was then again asking myself what I'm going to do with life after this part. <laughs> because like uh, it, it, it was a big success. I thought it was going to last, but it wasn't. So that's that's the way this industry is actually it has been like that mm. to me on some previous career before but that was my first company like it was my very own first company and 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 it uh time didn't treat it so well at as as yeah time didn't treat it so well as it get older <laughs> so mm. after that uh after that i well I contemplate for a bit and I thought, yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm here to make games. I, I will make games. So on 2017, I started firing up Google Drive and, uh, and create the first document that will be the game design document, I would say, for Airship Academy. Hmm. Uh, so it was me alone, like playing around in Unity, uh, exploring its possibility, looking around for reference, uh, reminiscing on my childhood <laughs> and think about things that 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 sort of make me happy mm. and yeah i put two and two together and i come to realization that i would need a lot of funding i would need a lot of expertise to help me with this so uh the first thing that that i did was uh, i found a company and start doing consultancy services so if uh basically a lot of people like this is around 2017 now, 2017, 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of a lot of people, a lot of uh, investor in Thailand, or a lot of companies actually, uh, they either want to one start a new game studio, uh, two expand their business into game development, or like three just want to like want to get into the game industry somehow. Mm. So, so yeah, uh, I took. A couple of jobs uh, going into the company, help them recruit people and stuff like that. I realized that 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 there's a lot of missing like uh, missing services for picking people up to the point where they can actually work on uh, work in a game industry. So we started off another initiative, and that's the uh, that's the what is it called again? Uh, game making starter kit. It's a uh, about 30 hour course. It is still ongoing right now for people who don't know anything about 
making games to the point where they're starting to know something about making game. So, yep, you can start that and 30 hours later after, uh, after some like exercise lecture, uh, you get to know, like, I wouldn't say that you know everything, but e even though like in the ad, it's, it says a lot more than that because everybody, uh, everybody else ad says the same thing. So I wouldn't know, uh, I wouldn't be able to compete if I don't say the same as everybody else, like you would be able to do this and that, but yeah, uh, it, 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 it really gets you to, uh, to be able to do stuff. Oh, so, so this is a service. Yep. Yeah. It's a, it's a course, online course. Online course. Okay. Yes. So yeah. do you still teach on these course? Yes. Uh, actually, like uh, one of the guys who's working with me, teacher, okay. or teacher. Uh, I I teach in the university nowadays. Ah, okay. So it it also start on uh, in two uh, yeah in two thousand sixteen back when I was yeah figuring out what to do. Uh, a couple of friends asked me to go help with their lecture. So I starting uh, so I start going to the university as a guest speaker first, and then after that they kind of like me a lot, so they invite me to like uh, to start teaching uh, as a what's it called again in English uh, as a guest lecture, yes, guest guest lecture, mm -hmm. right? And after that, I I've been I've been teaching up until this point, like I I I, I didn't really like uh, I didn't really have a lot of time, but since uh, I've already like. To most of the university up until this point, I helped them open up new subject and re replan their program mm -hmm. as well. So when I open a new subject and I went to teach, and then after that, you know, oh yeah, I'm so busy. I'm working on my own game now. I I, I can't just quit <laughs> because like it's difficult to find a new replacement for uh for a course that you start yourself. <laughs> <laughs> basically, basically like that. Maybe some of the students after they graduate, like. Uh, I've been teaching like four years ago. Like, yeah, they, some of them probably graduate now, but after that, they take some master and then they'll be able to come back and, and replace uh, replace me as a teacher. But up until this point, it's going to be very difficult. Uh, <laughs> such a handful work of you. Like, <laughs> there would be a lot of things to do. So, uh, since you have been in the, in the industry for a very long time, so how the landscape of the developer in Thailand has been changed during your time, like 15 years, right? Wow. <laughs> I, I imagine yeah, it, could, <laughs> it would be a lot, but could you like sum it up or maybe uh, give some advice? Like how, how could you cope with it? Like you, how, how could you like adapt to prepare yourself to ready for, for, for the future? Because that, there's, that, there's a lots of things to 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 be adapt here. Yeah. That that's a that's a whole new question entirely. Actually, yes, yes. <laughs> I, I would rather go into the history of what goes on around here first. All right. Uh, well, I'll try to be shorter than 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 the previous question. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> so yeah. Uh, I mean, like I, the way I would describe uh, Thai industry is that it's small in comparison to the rest of the world, and and by small, I mean like we usually have one big company that 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 is hiring everyone at one time, and then that company would go out, and the new one would replace it, and that company would go out, and the new one would replace it. It, it, it went on like this for like the last uh, for the first ten years of my career, I would say. Mm. Uh, we have Cyber Planet Interactive. When I was starting, uh, they have about some hundred of people. I joined them as well in their later days, and then. Uh, and then after that, it was kind of, uh, uh, yeah, there was Virus Studio after that. Uh, and yeah, we, I, I don't really like to talk about it today. Uh, and, <laughs> and then after Virus Studio, uh, after Virus Studio comes PlayLab. We also have been hiring like some hundreds of people as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and after PlayLab, uh, through Axion show up. So, it, uh, but then like things, things get a little bit different because uh, because after that, there are multiple major studios with with uh, with a lot of employees like uh, Ring Zero, uh, True Axion, and then Electronic Extreme. Uh, that I I I've, I'm I've been only mentioning uh, studios that really produce their own game at this point. But if we take into account things that have been going 
on along the way as well is another uh, is another matter. So there's another work for high sector that has been like growing mm. in Bangkok. As well. There are lots of studios that uh, that work for Hollywood, Disney, and Japanese studio. Uh, and yeah, some of them work for like some of them work for Square Enix as well. And nowadays, like some of them even work for like uh, yeah the Chinese production company. So so. The, uh, the work for high se sector has been growing as well. And nowadays, uh, a lot of people has grown up because of that. And they start there, as you can, uh, well, as you can see, during the last couple of years, uh, a lot of indie studios starting to show up, mm. right? So uh, those are the people that either come out of those big company in the past and also like uh, a production house that have been produ producing uh, global quality content, I would say. Mm. Uh, that's why most of our c screenshots, except for my game, looks very well and, re uh, and really stunning most of the time. Mm. Because we, we, we grew from that route. We, we kind of make like, we kind of make art asset most of the time. So yeah, uh, long story short, that's how it has been during the past 15 years. Uh, one new company that, that, that responds to like, uh, to the change, uh, to the new, no, I, I would say when there's a new market paradigm, right? One company would be uh, successful and then it would replace the previous one that kind of didn't manage to shift into the new paradigm. So I would say that now we come to the second part of the question is that how do we like prepare for uh, whatever it is in the game industry? I would say it's, it, it's getting used to the paradigm shift that is such a core nature of, of this industry. Uh, basically, like you always need to look out for a new way of monetizing or uh, making or, yeah, making is actually very important as well because uh, games get made very differently now in comparison to five years, six years ago. And also like marketing for your game uh, and also partnering with international partner changes uh uh it's what it's called again it's based practices or the way you do it uh very often mm. so yeah uh, that would be my take on that questions okay because it's really a tough question and and so many things that we could discuss it could be a whole new episode of of the podcast <laughs> itself that like very like a lot so Okay, now we should stick to the game, your game that we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna discuss here today. Well, of course, if, if we will have, we need to have some some of your background so people could get to know you. But for your latest title, your new title that has been announced recently, Airship Academy. So, what kind of game it is, and what's the inspiration behind it? All right. Uh, well. Uh... I kind of expect Airship Academy to be, uh, let's say, like uh, my uh, the major work I would say uh, in of my lifetime. So mm -hmm. it is something that I have had an idea uh, that I have had an idea for such a long time, mm -hmm. even though I just started pending it down in two thousand seventeen. But uh, the the whole thing about it is. Uh, this is the first game ever that I pay for the production myself, that I design and I manage the team myself. So uh, it has been something that I wanted to do since the beginning of my career, but I I, I, I couldn't. One of the thing is I have no idea. I like if you if 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 it was me from 15 years ago and I would have to get into this. I have no idea how I, how how I should start. Uh, it is quite a, I would say, complex uh, world and mechanic that we have been designing in Airship Academy. Mm. Uh, and, uh, well, I would rather that you chop down the questions a little bit and, like, let me focus on one point at a time, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> okay. otherwise, otherwise, it would go on, like, since how it, uh, how it was formed, how it was played, and then, like, yeah. Okay, uh, I'll make it easier for you. So, yeah. As you can me, what kind of game it is? Okay. Ah, all right. Simple. <laughs> Easy. All right. So, uh, Airship Academy is a uh, space and 
naval simulator simulation game uh, so uh, that take place in the fantasy fantasy sky so basically you uh, a lot of people have been playing eve online right i believe so everybody but have tried once because it's you can start it for free mm -hmm. right and then and and then like uh maybe sid meyer pirate uh maybe like things like port royale or maybe the x series uh the space game x series mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so yeah uh those those kind of games like where you own a ship and you travel the galaxy uh you meet aliens you meet people you talk to them you buy stuff from them you go somewhere else where that stuff is more expensive and then you sell that and then as 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 you uh, and then you buy some more things you go to some more place you get uh stopped by the pirate along the way you fight the pirate uh, you get stopped by law enforcement along the way you fight law enforcement enforcement uh at one point you would get a request to help people in need and then eventually it spun up into something that you have to go and 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 fight the government and things like that mm. uh those uh it is one of those kinds of game but i i i was quite curious why uh why nobody have ever thought uh have ever brought this concept to like the fantasy sky before uh it is either take place in like this kind of game either usually like take place in uh the the caribbean sea mm -hmm. or somewhere 5000 10000 years ahead in the future in 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 the future uh in the realistic i would say realistic uh uh realistic sci-fi of the future mm -hmm. so yeah um, nobody ever come up with this angle I, but actually like during the past few years after i started thinking about it there are some that shows up but none of them actually like tackle this in the magnitude that i'm tackling it with Mm -hmm. So there's a 2D pixel art game that that uh, I can't remember the name anymore. Uh, they 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 sell for little like they sell for like a couple of thousand like a couple of thousand copies. But but the fans seems to like it a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, in the Discord channel as well. But you 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 they, there's a very small like very small 2D map that you kind of like uh, you click and then like uh, your ship would go there. Your ship would be represented by 2D sprites and then. There are lists of things that you can buy in one port, and then you click, and then you guys go to another port. There's no fighting in the game whatsoever. So yeah, that's that's probably like the most detailed take on the thing right now. Mm. So and I'm I and I just came up with and I just came up with this and announced it this year and releasing it next year will probably be one of the first thing on the menu. I would mm. say. Ah, uh, I couldn't agree more. So basically, your game is that your ownership. You yes. going out explore the world and gathers the resort. You upgrade your ship, make them stronger, like uh, be able to fight like pirates. Or in the end, you might get to face like the airship army or something like that. So I'm 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 getting this right. Yeah, that's that's pretty the whole idea. It. Yes, pretty yep. much it, right? So, but you also, I guess this is also a story driven game because yeah. because you say there's a progress that you need to go out see some people there's a strong line that you could follow along the way correct of course that's correct okay so that would be yeah kind of unexpected because i can imagine this game would be uh like a ship simulator that you could like resort managing stuff macro stuff like crazy but you also have a story and could you please tell us a little bit about the story yeah so i would make a little bit of a remark first in terms of uh this being unique i, I would say that this kind of game having a very deep law and very deep story is not unique uh x siri has been doing that for the last 20 years almost uh they have very complex world but the thing is the nature of the game is that it is sandbox uh you don't have to participate in a story to play it mm. uh but yeah eventually at one point like if you want to unlock some cool ship cool recipe cool resource cool weapon you probably need to like sidetrack from your sandbox stuff into the story and then it will take you on a ride until the end most of the time mm. uh so yeah 
the story is mm, the question was what is the story yes, about yes, like, like like a short synopsis hmm. yeah uh, so you are a an airship commander there was a war going on with the world uh, you are an airship commander there was a war going on uh, and the war just kind of like went on for a very long time but eventually at one point everybody got tired of it and then they they didn't really sort of like they didn't really sign the peace agreement or anything uh, it was just kind of weighing down everybody just keeps their border and then uh, all of a sudden you you don't have your job anymore uh, you were kind of like uh, you were kind of mercenary ish privateer ish uh, and after that for almost a year you kind of like have to take side job furring people and things like that uh, until uh, like you were noticed by uh, by a merchant company I would say and they could use additional fleet uh, additional ship to their fleet and additional capable uh, commander to to help them with their business so they sent you a uh, they sent you a invitation later letter and you accepted it uh, because like it's a job right you have no job and you can accept into a job so you you, you take it yeah most of the time people take that so and then you arrive in this like uh in the far side of the continent i would say is 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 where is where uh is where it's it's the place that is far away from most of the most of the major power in the continent uh capitals are so it's kind of like i i would be that it it would be an analogy to thailand in a bit so this country is a is a border state between uh multiple superpowers mm. but it is on the far side of multiple super superpowers so there are a lot of things that are going on there uh, a lot of migrants moving through or settling in that place and 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 you get invited from wherever you are else in in the world and then then you get there and throughout the whole story like uh you will be asked to go and do things and then you will you will get to the point where uh where you get to found your company mm. and after that uh you would start getting requests and getting hired into uh helping uh helping like the rich and the poor of the kingdom to br either bring them food or investigate what goes on around uh around the kingdom itself eventually at one point uh you'll be involved in a revolutionary plot i would say and see the change in and 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 participate and see the changes in in the global landscape from that very small spot in the map that you were in mm. so it's kind of like that without spoiling anything yeah. yeah yeah that was surprise that was unexpected uh because you you said that it's comparable with thailand so that would be very very interesting for those who care about <laughs> maybe uh the the political plot of the the airship academy storyline or something like that actually i could expand on that a little bit okay so sure. but, uh for the main uh for the main let, let's say the main quest line itself uh we are going to explore the aspect of a nation uh a middling nation i would say mm -hmm. and the impact of uh the conflict or the connection between global superpowers that 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 plays part in how uh, middling nation in the world is is kind of shaped into, and the politic of that nation and the politic of commerce and everyday people in that nation. So we we did it very well in terms of like we wrap everything in like in a fantasy setting, and uh, we kind of like use the use the the Scott. I would say you you wouldn't uh, yeah you know the Scott right from Scotland mm -hmm. uh, as kind of like a rapper for 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 these people that live in this kingdom, but well if if you actually like if 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 you actually go into into what to say uh, into listening to the way people think and the way people behave uh, as a Thai you recognize that these are Thai people. Uh, they are just they just look like the Scotch and they just speak like the Scotch, but they think like Thai people. 
uh, that is one of the thing that 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 is the major part of like uh, culture culture design of uh, this kingdom that we are going to uh, that we're going to be sailing around in. So yeah, that's <laughs> I, interesting indeed. So you need to like if if you in this kind of things like. Uh, political scheme of in in the game in the universe. I I'm quite believe this is gonna be the law of this game gonna be quite something. So that's one thing to looking forward to. But aside from story itself, people might want to know how exactly you play the game, like like the mechanics, the systems. Like how would you describe them? Like how would you play it? It's very simple. Uh, you have an airship, right? And you click <laughs> to tell them uh, to tell your airship where to go. Mm-hmm. So that that would be the the, the the top level surface of everything. Uh, so you have an airship. It flies around, and then to make it a little more complex. So as you fly fly around, you get to visit ports, right? Uh, so yeah, in all of these games, it's either space station or Caribbean port. Uh, I do have ports, and they are on floating island. So you visit the port to restock, resupply, talk to people, uh, and what's uh, again? Yeah, refit your airships and so on and so forth. Uh, those those are done mostly through interface. Uh, we kind of like we kind of use the uh, we we try to save the budget on the three D environment quality by. Using a lot of illustration when when there's a conversation and when the and when the player is browsing the menu, so so yeah, you get to interact with almost everything on an interface when you are in a port. So you land in a port, you get to see three D city for a bit, but you kind of like browse through interface, talk to merchants, uh, and then go to the shipyard, buy some new components for your ship, put it on your ship. And you can see how your uh, how your ship performance kind of change according to what you put in, and then you can also like buy new ships. Uh, every ship will have different set of. Data. I'll go into I'll go into the detail of each aspect of this a little bit in a little bit later, but I'll give you the overview first. So yeah, uh, you visit the port, you do stuff with your ship, you do stuff with people in the port, and then you fly off. Uh, as you fly off, there's a world map. Uh, you actually like are. Cruising to the through the sky in real time, basically. So if you are traveling like uh, 50 kilometers, then it will be like 30 kilometer per hour airship cruising through 50 kilometers uh, distance, and that would take an hour and 45 minutes, I think, if oh. my math is correct. But you can speed up the time. You can speed up the time. But there's always the clock, and the sun would go up and go down with the time as well. So time does really pass perception-wise in this game, mm-hmm. uh, and you travel distance in this game. You, uh, it's, it's, it is. We we don't really like. Uh, I would say simplify or mm-hmm. kind of like imply. Yes, imply physical space in the game. Uh, most of the trading games and like most of the trading game and. Uh, Space simulation and the uh, naval simulation they they imply distance quite a lot. Uh, your travel, uh, your ship would be represented on a map, and you would travel very very fast. Like if you measure the distance in the real world, you will see them go at like at something like 500, 600 kilometers for per hour through through the water. But but like since it's kind of implied, so people don't take it seriously. Uh, we we don't do that. We 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 are uh, we are kind of leaning towards space sim where you uh where of course in space there's a warp drive and most of the time that you warp you warp between place to place or you hyper drive between place to place so the distance doesn't really matter much in terms of uh the time it takes to travel from place to place so we kind of like hop into the middle of that and introduce something that is real uh places that are not so far apart from one another and allow player to accelerate time and then to go between place to place, basically. Mm-hmm. And we get to keep the perception of time because like when you're kind of like implying time, you can't really like do sunset and sunrise mm-hmm. properly. Uh, so yeah. And and then like along the way, as you fly, right? You may, may, maybe you intended this, maybe you, you don't, but you get to fight some people. 
Ah, uh, I'm about uh, to ask like <laughs> during the time that you travel, you're gonna have you will have met with some unexpected event like 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 pirate might attack you or something like that. Yes, uh, it's it's pretty standard in this kind of games. You you don't just you don't just like uh, you don't just like get robbed all the time or get attacked all the time. You most of the time like uh, run into ordinary people mm. uh, with their ordinary stories. Right, uh, a merchant is ferrying like a good from one port to another. Uh, you would run into them. You get to decide if you're gonna rob them or not because you can. Uh, in all of the game, I uh, don't see the reason why we shouldn't. But always, always, like if you if you attack the innocents, there will always be a stigma that follow you, and then you get hunted down eventually at one point uh, if you keep on doing it. And yeah, of course, the main the main thing about this whole thing is that you you're going to get attacked by like vicious criminal and pirates as well, mm. and you get to fend them off. So. Yeah, let's get into like uh, let's get into combat in the game. Mm. It's a so it's a simulation game, right? Therefore, the combat is simulation. Uh, so that uh, this is not a turn-based game. Don't worry about that. Everything takes place in real time. So you are going to get sort of like we 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 make sure the combat is dramatized without mm. like without. Uh, bringing the player away from the sense that this is still taking place in the world. So that uh, I, I need to make some reference about it a little bit. So ga in games like Sid Meier Pirates or in games like a uh, long time ago, uh, Skies of Arcadia, or in most recently, I would say games like Port Royale and, uh, and, and those titles, when you run into the enemy, right, you get loaded into a new and different scenes mm. where the battle takes place. Mm. And it's sort of I know fantasy like Yep, kinda of like that. Uh, yeah. And and to me that kind of break and immersion that you are still being a part of the world, it's more like you're getting what to somewhere else and then and then the fight carries on there. Uh we didn't do that. However, we also didn't go into something like uh something like mm, I would say world of warship and stuff where like, okay, there, there's always enemy around. You get to cruise through them. You get to select, uh, decide to uh, hide or run away from the, 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 the ships that you, you can't engage and stuff like that. Uh, or like or things like open world MMORPG. Uh, a lot of people might play that already where you can like go around the enemies and like the fight actually happens as you travel. We didn't go that direction as well because... The problem with that direction is you can't dramatize the combat. You can't isolate the player from other enemies that might come in and things like that, which would kind of like break the entertainment of, you no, know, I would say the idea of entertaining yourself with trying to outwit and trying to fight one enemy and trying to overcome them and trying to survive uh, at that particular moment. So I want to preserve the feeling that you are ha you have to focus and you have to try to survive from this engagement while also don't get rid of like uh, the feeling that you are still in the world. Uh, you are not being taken to somewhere else to do the fight. So for every fight in our game, uh, there will be an exchange in dialogue between, between, our, uh, between our officer on board our ship and the enemy officer on board enemy ships. Mm. Uh, I haven't come up with a clear idea of how they managed to kind of like shout to each other. <laughs> Talk to, to each other <laughs> during, yeah, but, during a, like the cannon fire <laughs> or something like that. But, 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 but it, it did happen and, and we visualized it in, ter in uh, kind of like they were using megaphone or they were talking over uh, magical radio and stuff like nice. that. Nice. So mm. it, 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 it's kind of worked out. Uh, I'll left the rest of the audience to do the imagining, as in like how they <laughs> how they manage to shout at each other, Gundam fight style in yeah. the middle of the battle. Uh, yeah. yeah, so you we, be, we, you'll be able to trash talk your enemy during like <laughs> the fighting scene. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not really you in particular. Uh, your, your, your character your, your, or something like that. Yeah, your crew, your crew, your officers. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. Yeah. So yeah. So that that's that's the that's the meat of the uh, of the, the the what is it called again the battle uh, experience. So you 
in a focus against a group of enemies or one enemy. Most of the time you fight one enemy, but yeah, sometimes you get to face a group of enemies. So uh, what happened? The fight start, uh, you were brought into like, you, you didn't get transferred anywhere, but you are kind of isolated from the rest of the world at the same time as well. Mm. So the enemy would come in, you would come in, uh, there would be a trash talk and then there's no there's no way around it if the battle has already started that uh eventually like after the trash talk uh both sides open fire at one another mm. so in the battle there's a lot to unpack i'll try to go through uh one at a time uh briefly so first thing first is both sides always start outside of the firing distance of one another so you get to either like decide to maybe run away if you're fast or maybe uh, circle around and try to try to what's it called and try to flank uh, the enemy ship from multiple directions depending on uh, depending on your speed and your agility as well. Wait, um, how many ship you yeah. can control at a time? One one ship. Only one ship, one ship in in the battle. Yeah. You mean? Yes. Okay. So you you have one ship, but then again, like at one point, uh, there will be a fleet system where other one and one or two ships depending on how you decide is going to follow you into the battle well you wow. can't really you can't really control them uh they're going to help you with sort of like pre pre-plan uh battle plan mm -hmm. and then they'll, they'll go in they'll help you fight uh but yeah uh the 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 main the main thing about the main thing about the combat would be you and your ship and your crew you are with your ship and you're with your crew and uh the the battle control uh i would say can be simple and can be difficult it that's is that kind of game so basically like there's nothing simple about controlling ships in airship academy at all you just click and then it goes to the direction that you click very simple straightforward mm -hmm. and then another layer to add is that the further you click away from the ship the faster is trying to go that direction so mm -hmm. That's it. That is how you control your ship. And the rest happened kind of automatically. Uh, your officer would fire guns for you and your crew would fire guns for you. You don't, you don't decide when to fire or what to fire I, uh, or what to fire at. But you kind of like can tell your gunner uh, <clears throat> what, kind of, what, kind of like, what kind of mode of operation that, they want them to, uh, that you want them to, uh, to, to operate. Basically, you can tell them to cease fire. That means they're gonna stop firing and do something else, like uh, putting together more, more am uh, unpacking more ammo so that you have more ammo to use. Or you can tell them to sort of like help repair the ship as you uh, as you cease fire as well, as well, kind of like that. And you can also tell your captain to to like focus on steering or focus on speeding and stuff like that. So. You tell your, you actually like get to tell your officer what they should be doing as you control the ship, mm. right? So that is controlling the ship. One other thing about controlling the ship as well is that you can always right click, and then your captain is going to do the job for you. Mm. So that's autopilot. It's already there. It's already available in the current build. Uh, we are going to test later on, or open the test session later on. But yeah, so that's that's you and your ship. The enemy does the same thing. They'll they'll try to outflank you. They'll try to uh, they'll try to mow you down first before you mow them down first. That's that's the way it goes. So both sides keep <clears throat> unloading uh, weaponry, firearm, and whatnot, and magic missile uh, lasers. Magic missile, okay. Yeah, there, yeah. There's a, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of that, uh, and magic torpedo and things. Okay. So. We we are not we are we are not in the Caribbean, you know. The, we are we are we are not in the Caribbean. So, I I, I want to I want combat to re, combat the combat to really really also reflect that. So there are many types of armament on the ship, uh, from like magical beam, uh, magical dead ray, uh, <laughs> yeah, and and of course like our. Uh, our old friends like cannonball cannon with cannonball mm. uh we are all the, the story also take place during the kind of like somewhat uh industrial revolution of the era as well so there are uh there are like there are modern sort of modern uh artillery shells as well uh 
and there are magic missile, uh, chemical missile, torpedoes, uh, mines, hmm. and we'll keep expanding the list of things in the arsenal. And each of them we have variant that we have differently, like guns that fire in very long volley and takes very long load time. Uh, guns that fire very far, guns that fire very short distance, and and those things. So there are variations to all of those that I've just talked about. Mm. We already put it in the game, though. So, so yeah, uh, I can say whatever I want because it's already in there. I'm not <laughs> making any promise right now. Mm. <laughs> so yep. So both sides are loading whatever and whatnot against one another up until the point where the battle is decided. And <clears throat> here comes the complex part. Of the thing, so in Airship Academy, you are not. <clears throat> I'm sorry for that. <clears throat> All right, you were not given a ship that is complete. You are not given a ship that is already armed, that 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 has a specific set of weapon or specific set of uh, of internal like engine and chambers and the storage and whatnot like that. You are given a canvas. Where you can uh, go around the world and acquire paints, I would say, and you can you can uh, work with this canvas in pretty much a lot of ways that you want. Mm. So you get uh, so basically, let's get a little less like abstract. So every airship in this game is uh, is a grid. Is a grid. a grid. So it's a table full of grids where you can place uh, chip parts on top of. And depending on how you lay out your ship on those grids, uh, your ship reflect to that in terms of performance and how it perform in battle. Mm, so, so like even you starting out with a very small ship, it would have a space to support like in-game components very complex, uh, very complex uh, weapons, very complex uh, drive system, and very complex uh, power plant and things like that. Hmm. So yeah, but big kind uh, of ship, I... you will be able to support more, more of your parts, right? Yes, okay. and also like the heavier it gets. Oh, so right? it will be, it won't be able to go as fast as the smaller one or nimble, agile as the smaller one. The thing is, uh, if you fit it in a certain way, you can do that, okay. but you will also uh, lose what's ability it called? And, uh, to off yep. other aspect of the ship, like firearm, yeah. firepower, or something like that. Mm, yes, okay. there's, there's a lot of trade off to do. So, like, even though you're in a big ship, you can go fast, given that you, well, like, you get rid of the armor and some of the weapons and some of the power generation capacity and stuff like that. Got it. But then why be on the big ship if you don't load the big gun, right? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, the game kind of compels the player to, 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 to go slower when they have bigger ships, mm. so in a sense. But yeah. yeah, you can do whatever you like. Yeah, there are some perhaps. questions. Like, I, I, would ha I would like to have some questions. Like, how the real world navy combat will be like similar to to the combat in this game oh, obviously you got like magic missile it's not thing realistic about it but is the is a real world naval combat tactics will be work in this game so like so far as naval combat goes uh i would say it going to work very differently because one of the thing is we didn't like incorporate the 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 water and the wind aspect into the game we might have the wind aspect into the game later on depending on the uh, development schedule uh, and also the community uh, airship academy is planned right now right now we don't have a lot of people in the community but it is planned to be very community driven and we will listen to the uh to the community in terms of like whether they want us to focus more on the trade and the sky faring business end of the thing or keep getting more toys into the combat aspect of the game as mm. well so uh in terms of naval combat uh things that things that are similar would be like both ship would, would uh 
I mean, like chips in battle would try to outflank one another all the time. Mm. So that would be the the tactic during the uh, age of sail. I would say. Uh, I would say because, like you know, if it's today's naval today's naval combat is very different, very different yes. from age mm. of sail combat, mm. right? Uh, well, battle uh, like battleship is not a thing anymore nowadays. Mm. Uh, we we all have aircraft carriers, and no, not yes. we all. I mean, like superpower, uh, yes. aircraft carrier, and we don't. What about <laughs> aircraft carrier? You could make yeah. that too. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I'm going to have to apologize. We are kind of like uh, we are kind of trying not to make, you know, the setting of the game take place during the industrial revolution. Mm. So basically, great not big ships are the thing mm-hmm. uh, of its time, and we are Damn. still relying on like direct fire, direct fire, or. What's it called again? Uh, direct fire and indirect fire uh, guns yeah, as well. Uh, we and yeah, that that there's no aircraft carrier in the game. Oh, I so would to love speak... to have one. <laughs> Please consider, but yeah, don't maybe mind. like <laughs> maybe like if we have like uh, Airship Academy ten or something like that, we will have time time progress <laughs> two hundred years into the future, and we would have airship that carry airship and carry airship and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's, it's it's not going to be in the first game at okay. least. What yeah. about what about uh, the ship decoration? Of course, you're the talking ship. about the uh, the performance. You can you can like replace your components of 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 your ship. Is that will affect how your ship looks? Yes, I get asked that a lot actually, mm. especially from the publishers. Uh, so the only two thing that you are going to be able to customize in terms of look is uh is the color of the sail and the emblem that goes on the sail. Mm. So your ship kind of is going to always look the same, regardless of how you uh, how you decorate it. But everything is going to reflect. Uh, it's going to get reflected to the player as soon as uh, you start traveling and you see your ship goes faster, slower, turn better, and get into the weapon and get to see like and get to see how the ship perform, what kind of armament that is fire. Hmm. Uh, we are well. If there's a lot of requests, we might get into. We might get into letting players like decorate the ship. But so far, like uh, my principle of design, follow Blizzard during its heyday principle of design as well. Uh, we do gameplay first, and then we do hmm. aesthetic a little bit later. Oh. So, hmm. so uh, there's a lot. There's there's a lot of uh, customization to do with how like the gameplay work on the ship. But not a lot of customization to do in terms of how the ship looks like. Mm. Uh, that 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 would be the way we are going at first. But again, like all of these things depend on budgets, right? And I'm trying to allocate most of the budgets into the gameplay and the richness of the world and things that player can do function wise. Mm. So maybe like if we if we get to the point where there are so much uh, where 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 we sell uh, where we sell a lot of copies. Uh, we can engage in some luxury. Then we we'll get to the point where we probably release a patch that that let player paint the ship and put some more decorations on top of it. Mm. But yeah, that is not a part of the part of the initial plan as of this point. Okay, gotcha. So all right, uh huh. Okay, you can continue if there's any other. Yeah, and um, so we were at. Combat and at ship optimization, uh, ship customization aspect of it. So, basically, we talk a little bit about like uh, giving up, uh, about giving up like performance one performance to favor other performance, right? So, uh, basically, everything, uh, almost everything in Airship Academy adhere to Newton law, except that we introduce like, except that we introduce magic into it. <laughs> mm. So, so. Uh, your ship, dep- uh, depending on your ship weight and depending on your ship propulsion power in Newtonian physics, it will uh, that will determine how fast your ship can fly. So you have to balance between how much weight you put on your ship with weapons and things like that, and then like the the, the drive power that you put on the ship as well. Uh, and then the turn speed is also affected by the weight of the ship and your engine power. You are going to get offered like engines that uh, fly forward, that that propel forward really fast, but does very poorly at turning around. 
uh, you get uh, you get engines that help you move sideways. Of course, airships can move sideways. We are not a naval ship, uh, so yeah, that moves sideways better, while also uh, maybe like consume more power, mm. in a sense. So there's a lot of like give and gain advantage on different uh, on different parts that we are going to offer in the game, and uh, and with with that, and we customize the ship using the grid like that. One of the major thing in the gameplay is that. In the battle, you don't shoot at the ship, and the ship HP comes down, and then once it's run out of HP, it's explode. That is not how the battle works in Airship Academy. In Airship Academy, you shoot at parts. Mm. So the grid, we mentioned the grid earlier, right? So all of those grid, all the parts that you put on are going to be, are going to be in there, in the battle. Whichever part get hit and get destroyed, you lost performance and integrity of the ship for that ah, part. I see. Oh, it could more. And it could be more realistic with with combat aspect, right? Because if you got hit at your 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 weapons, then you will be able to fire. And if you got hit in the engine, then your ship will be less maneuverable. Something like that. Yes, that's mm-hmm. that's 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 the core of it. And then we were like, well, you know, we spent the last 15 minutes like kind of a pivoting from the previous, uh, from the from the last thing that I talked about. That is how the combat end. So <laughs> we 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 finally get to that point. <laughs> so the combat the, the the combat in the game doesn't end when your ship runs out of HP, so to speak. Uh, inside your ship, there are drive, right? There are engines, thing that propel the ship forward, right? And then there are power plants that generate the mana, the electricity, or whatnot that that help every other parts run. Mm. Uh, and there are places where you are com- where the commander and the crew stays and work and walk around and issue order. Right, we call those commands parts. Mm. So if you lost all your power plant, your ship is not going to work anymore. Right, mm. so that's one way your ship can go out. If you lost all your drive, your ship can't move anymore. That's another way your ship can go out. Mm. Or you lost, uh, or if you lost uh, the officer quarter, so which means like all your officers are injured and they can't work anymore, mm. then that's what that's one way you can go out. Mm. Or the other way you can go out is uh, to surrender as well. Mm. Uh, yeah, there's also another feature that we are working on right now. Uh, it's a boarding action. So wow. basically, like mm. you, but yeah, you you are wowing because you are thinking about like, cin- uh, cin- cin- highly cinematized boarding action. Well, but yeah, I'm going to have introduce to... the whole other aspect, like mechanics and system to the game, like a, a parts of crew that uh, make the ship functional. You will have another set of crew who will be able to fight on board or something like that. Usually in naval combat, everyone got to fight. I would say. So I mean, hand to hand combat, like because uh, you, yeah, you're gonna board mean, the ship. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, there's a there's a lot of sword and there's a lot of guns and there's a lot of magic. So, but yeah, those are not really visualized. Uh, I'll have to disappoint you. But <laughs> when you move your ship close enough hmm. to another ship, uh, the crew on both ship would start kind of like hopping aboard and start. Firing and fencing against each other, you will see that in terms of the boarding progress and the GUI that shows up in the game, and then like whichever ship lost, uh, all of its crew first mm-hmm. are going to give up, and that can also be the, the other way that the ship goes out in combat as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there are many aspects in terms of like how you win or how you lose in combat in Airship Academy. So it is impossible for the ship that to be completely destroyed, right? Uh, it is possible. So once you destroy all the drive, the ship will sunk from the sky into the ocean below. Mm. Yep, <laughs> that is possible. Okay. Uh, and then like and then yeah that well. I'll 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 rather let everyone find out how every <laughs> how, how people survive uh, airship sinking from the sky. Okay. We we already have that in the game. Oh, so people can it, survive it, it, out of that too. It, it, yeah, it will be it will be visualized. Well, 
this is a world magic. Anything could happen. But yeah. for uh, the next things that will that I would like to ask you that what would you get out of this combat? Ah, so well, one of the thing is uh, if you manage to uh, if you manage to capture the ship intact, uh, but there are a lots of condition to go around to get to this to get to get to this part. You get to keep the prize ship and also uh, the cargo. Mm. But most of the time, the enemy is going to sur either surrender to you or allow themselves to or fight you to the death. That means they are going to capsize. Mm. You get some. Uh, you get less loot, but then like. But then, like, yeah, it's better than 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 the sh uh, and it's better than capsizing everything all the time. So when they give up, they will give up their cargo. But uh, if you uh, if you manage to fight them to the death, yeah, that that there will be some way that you will get something out of that. And um, uh, I would I would rather left uh, the audience to uh, to go and check it out in the game how people actually like survive as she falling down from the sky. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> yep. Uh, so you get, and your officer, your officer are going to get experience, mm. and you can level them up. <laughs> Once you level them up, they will come with new skills, right? Mm. Uh, that, that's a lot of that's a lot of thing that we have been working on throughout the past two years. I would say, mm. uh, I have also been like designing way before that. So we sort of like optimize uh, our work by by reducing, like you know. Uh, try and error because a lot of things have been thought out in the document years beforehand. But then afterward, after implementation, I did a lot of changes as well because, like you know, not everything that worked on the paper actually worked mm. in the actual game. So yeah, uh, actually, like uh, ports, traveling, and combat is uh, are the three major aspects of the game, and the rest. Kind of goes the same way as other game, like questing. Of course, you go, you talk to people, they ask for something, you bring them that thing, they give you reward, and then they tell you to go somewhere else to do something else. Uh, questing just works like that. It, that that's like nothing magical about it. I would say it works the same in this game. It works the same in other games. I would rather not like you know. I we already like give player a lot of new stuff to learn. So I I, I would rather. That the rest of the game works the same way as other games, so that people don't really have to learn way too much. Mm. So yeah, and also things like trade. You go to the NPC, you select what you're gonna buy, you buy, you hit buy button. If you have enough money, you can pay for it. If you don't have enough money, then you can. Uh, then you can also select stuff from your cargo, and then you uh, you hit sell button, and then you sell. W very simple and straightforward. And like uh, and at one point in the game, you get to build a uh, you get to build your own industry. So you go into the menu, you you hit buy, you spend money and spend some resource onto a certain building. That building will make you some stuff. You ask, you ask it to maybe make you more cannons, uh, mine more irons and stuff like that. And 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 yeah, and and then they would do it the same way other games do it. Wait, so, wait, you're gonna have yeah. your your home port as well, because you you're building a building. You're building a building now, right? Yep. So uh, I wouldn't say you have a home port. Uh, it, you you can call anywhere in the in the Suse Kingdom your home, but still, oh. it, it it is just it is just like oh, a port. It that, could be that, anywhere. Like you could build yes. building like in any city and towns or. So in, in every city. port, there will be unique resources and un uh, yeah, unique resources you available on those ports, mm. and. Uh, you get to go there, and you get to talk to the governor and buy the deed to the land, and then you use the deed to the land to kind of like uh, to 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 build uh, to own that land and build stuff on. So for some places that they have uh, natural irons on uh, on the island, you can build iron mine and then extract iron, and then you can uh, you can buy another piece of land and build a and build a foundry on it to smelt the iron and stuff like that, and then you pick up the iron. By yourself, of course, and then you ferry it to some, uh, some what is it called again? Uh, to some city where there are craftsmen that that buy these iron, and then you make profit. Hmm. Kind of like that, yes. Hmm. So, uh, could you like describe how how many resource? What how many kind of resource that available in game? Maybe a prox, like oh well, ten. We 20? haven't got to. 
we haven't got to the point where we start filling up the resource table mm -hmm. in the game just yet. Uh, I already have a clear concept of like making sure it's the same as other games, <laughs> so that people have to learn about it. So we will have yeah, we will have woods, right? Multiple types of woods, like mm -hmm. whatever wood you have in uh, whatever wood they have in Walheim, we are going to have it. Uh, so whatever metal they have in Walheim, we're gonna have it. <laughs> it, it and 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 like Walheim is not original, right? It, all the things like it's dated back since Minecraft, right? Uh, people are not going to have to figure out what they are gonna do with this stuff and this stuff. Like you mine the iron, you get iron ore, and then like everybody already know when they got iron ore, they got to smell it, right? I mm. don't really want player to have to think about like what they're gonna do with those. Mm. So the the basic resource are gonna be uh, yeah those metal ores, uh, the wood, and like meat, grain, vegetable, uh, boring stuff. But then like along the way, it gets processed into something more interesting. Mm. So like in other games, like you would make ax, you would make sword and stuff like that. Instead in Airship Academy, you'll be making cannons, you'll be making more ships, of course. Mm. And, but we also have, uh, a unique line of resource called the uh, mana crystal. Mm. So the mana crystal is the magical resource in this game, and you're gonna use that on magical stuff. Mm. So yeah, that's that's one aspect that we are adding on top of all of this. And like the 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 whole production line is going to be tedious because this is a game about transportation as well. So it's a it's a sailing uh, it's a it's a space sim and naval sim. So the aspect about transporting things between places is one of the ma major aspects. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you uh, you start off with iron ore, uh, you smell iron, and then you turn iron into cannon parts, and then cannon parts get manufactured into cannons. Some of those cannon parts might be might also be usable by some other recipe, like uh, like in magic missile. Like if you make like if you make something like a a, a, a metal sheet, for instance, if you make a metal sheet, then that might be used as a, as a, what's it called again, as a base for the cannon as well. Uh, if you have, if that cannon is turnable and stuff like that, but the same metal sheet is going to be used for, let's say, uh, magic, magic, magic ray guns and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, like, there will be this interlacing uh, resource tree that goes on throughout the whole uh, throughout the whole production line, but basically, like to achieve something complex, like building a ship or building a uh, building a complex com uh, complex ship parts, you have to work with like you know my uh, work from the bottom end of the supply chain to the top top end of the supply chain. I would say that, mm. uh, and you also have to unlock recipe by doing quests and helping people or go to the Bigger town library and pay pay and pay the librarian to share you the, the the secret of the engine recipe and stuff like that. So that'll be that aspect of the game as well that I haven't talked about much because like you know uh, it works just the same as in other games. So hmm. that's not not much of a big point to cover there. Oh, yeah. wow! We cover so many things like the action size of the game, combat style, and also the economy size. So. This game is not. Is it a multiplayer game or MMO game or just a single player game? So at one point, at one point in the future, uh, we'll do uh, fundraising for the game as well. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm. I don't have a clear, determined date for that. But we will have a stretch goal in terms of like how much money the game made before we add multiplayer into it. Uh, it's not going to be MMO, but nowadays, nowadays you can. Just have like sing uh like what's it called again PVP in the game very easily with today's technology. So uh, if we get to the point where there is enough sale that we decide that okay there's a lot of players now they will probably want to fight one another right when a lot of people get together they start fighting that's that's the way things are. <laughs> <laughs> so so like, they they want to fight one another right uh we we we'll, we we'll, we we'll, we'll, yeah, I already have the whole architecture plan out, so we'll be using something like a photon multiplayer engine, and then the player that is all in the same uh, cluster, I would say, the, in the same areas in the game, are going to automatically uh, link up with 
photon multiplayer lobby. We we are not going to kind of we we will have the uh, we will have the what's it called and we have the uh, something in the menu to let them toggle uh, multiplayer discoverability on and off. So if you toggle it off, then you will not run into anyone else. You just be on your own, do your own stuff. But if you toggle it on uh, and you are sharing the same area at, at, as other players, you are going to get mashed up and you get into a fight. So it's a uh, it it goes the same way as national combat basically uh there will be a trash talk at the beginning in which we allow we would allow player to type some stuff we are we are still being skeptical about letting player freely type stuff <laughs> between letting player freely type stuff and just provide them with a lot of emojis and let them use the emojis because like you know pvp games can be very very toxic and i don't really want player to associate trash talk mm. trash talking <laughs> as a culture in this game <laughs> so so yeah it's it's uh, i'm still back and forth with myself in terms of whether or not we will allow player to to type down <laughs> to type down stuff but yeah it will be it will be available in the extended goal so if we have enough cell we have it in uh, the game is capable of doing that uh well yeah uh, yeah, I'm 15 years into the industry now. I kind of know how it works. So, so yeah, the game is the, the game is capable of doing that, but we don't really have the budget for it if the sales is low. So it's kind of going to be one of the things in the extended goal that 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 will uh, that we will put into uh, the development later on. Mm. So, but yeah, you will uh, you will mind your you you go around mind your own business. Uh, turn multiplayer discoverability on if someone else is also playing on the same game version as you are and they are kind of traveling through the same uh, server cluster. So the same area in the game, we call, it, we call it a cluster. So once they enter the same cluster, they go into the lobby and then the matchmaking happens. You get matched with someone. And yeah, you uh, both sides will be seeing different landscape in the fight. But essentially, they will be brought together in the same arena and fight. Uh, no, in the same, let's say, yeah, we separate the gameplay layer with the graphic layer below it. So on if you if you were like let's say player a is is cruising above uh an mtc the player b is cru cruising next to the battle player a will see the battle takes place on top uh above the sea the wow. player b uh -huh. see the battle takes place above the mountain so both of them will see different thing but they will be battling uh in the same like game space okay yeah gotcha so mm -hmm. that that's the way it's gonna work Oh. If we get to that point, yeah. <laughs> I hope we so, get to that point oh, yeah. because I wanted to see that. Okay, buy, buy a lot of copies, and we'll definitely <laughs> put it in. <laughs> of course, of course. Speaking of buying a lot of copies, how would you describe the business model and the long-term support longevity of the game? Yeah, so Airship Academy will be game as a service. I would say, uh, of course, it will be it will be a premium game. You play, you you're gonna pay. Well, uh, I hope everybody pay full retail price. <laughs> it's at twenty four at twenty four ninety nine dollars. Uh, it is. Oh, the price a, settled now. Yes, we already settled the price now. Okay. It's twenty four ninety nine. Uh, it is not a small low budget indie game. I put a lot of money on it, so like it is not like those two hours game that you play that you pay like five ninety nine or ten ninety nine uh, or nine ninety nine and and buy. No, it is it is quite a large. Scale game, uh, you can expect twenty four ninety nine well spent because there will be hundreds of hours of content you can go through. So, yeah, uh, that's one of the things. So it's premium, and then of course we'll be releasing DLCs. We'll expand the world based on the base game up until the point where it's not expandable anymore, and then we'll probably consider something else as an option. Uh, yeah, that's the business model. Mm, okay, so expect a lot from airship academy like we can see if if things go as planned we can expect like years of content from uh the the mr j team and 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 we hope i really hope that we get to that point because i really want to play and want to see how is how things goes like really appreciate you here today jay so, Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, well. it's really fun. It's really exciting here. All this kind of stuff. And um, before we closing out our podcast, uh, which I would like to to give some advice for the 
developers i mean maybe an upcoming developers in our country oh so you want me to kind of address to the kids uh well it's not only the kids you know the deal <laughs> oh, Yeah, whoever is in the ah, industry. all right. So, so, so newcomers. Mm. Let's say newcomers, right? <laughs> newcomers and people who 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 kind of like want to join us in the game development scene. Uh, I'm, well, I am a teacher myself. I have a lot in terms of what I would I would like to say. But the thing is, like all of us came from different backgrounds, mm. and we all of us will have different starts, right? Uh, I'm going to make some reference to other game developers here. Uh, people like uh, people like Bob Nenin from Extend Interactive or Mr. James from Unique Studio. Uh, those two kind of start off very similarly, right? They work in the universities with their friends, and uh, they work on game projects. They started off as uh, they started off as a team, right? Uh, and there are people like me who is alone in the world and having to figure everything out from the beginning. Uh, and there are people like you know somebody who have been working for quite some years now, and and have been kind of like you know a part of the community. They've been listening into other people, uh, announcing their game, making their game, and they 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 kind of want to get into it. They have some savings as well. Uh, there are different kind of advice for different kinds of people, I would say. But one of the thing is that always all the time I, i i tell everyone the same one same thing is that don't invest too much on your first on your first release i'm not going to say don't invest too much on your first game because there are of course those people who have been like claiming that they work on the same game for the past five years and they just release it most of the time if that is also their first title that is not their first game they've been kind of like working In the background on games that they never release, and then they kind of scrap it, and then they remake it into what you see as their first release. But this is not. Uh, you are going to mess up on your first project 100% of the time. You mess it up, and then you either hide it, which is good, you can hide it, uh, or 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 like you know, uh, or announce it, and then it is going to. Flop anyway because you make a lot of mistake mistake in it. Uh, your first project is going to be, is going to flop. Yeah, uh, either, either like in terms of you telling yourself that this is not good enough, I'm not going to release it. To like you know to something like you show it to other people and they don't really like it. Uh, but yeah, you learn from that. You will learn from that. Therefore, try to get something else. Being lean, uh, spend the least amount of money on it as possible. And see how other people react to your first project first be before you start having enough confidence, enough don't let you fail enough time without losing. Like the um, important thing about starting out is that try to fail as much as you can without losing anything. Hmm. It's, it's 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 one of the important tricks here. You you your failure there contribute to the learning so that you can you can be confident enough and you can have enough. To invest, uh, to to confidently, actually invest your saving or invest your, or, or invest actual like resource that you can lose into the project. So, uh, that 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 would be my prime advice for mm -hmm. basically everyone. Try to lose, try to fail without losing until the point that you are ready to actually lose something before you put. Like uh, before, you put a lot of resource behind what you're making. Hmm. Yeah, that would be really helpful advice for those who want to enter the game development scenes. So, thank you very much, Jay, Mr. Jay, and hope everything goes well with your project. And uh, before you go, you have been selling a Ship Academy for like an hour or plus now. So, if people's <laughs> interest In Airship Academy, where should they go? Like, well, just Google Airship Academy. <laughs> Very simple and straightforward. So yeah, uh, we still did it on stream, uh, Steam. Uh, I can guarantee you, I've done SEO on it already. So if you search Airship Academy, you see first our website, and then next is the Steam page. Right. Of course, if you uh, well, that can go wrong if you are a kind of person who have been very fascinated with. 
airship and then search the word airship and go to other website many times before this the search engine is going to show something else but yeah uh you can google it if you don't find it just uh go to www.airship-academy.com or actually like go into steam and type the word airship we are on number four right now <laughs> number four Okay. Yeah, uh, we are under like first thing first that come up in the Steam search is Among Us Airship Expansion. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's not even a game about airship, well, but they you, occupy the top. You have to get into them. You have to get into them. You can't compete with that. Okay, all right. And I hope, lastly, I hope that you will join my Prey Prime 2022. <laughs> right, so I, I will join your Prey Prime 2022. Thank you very much. And I'll as yeah, Most of I you can. a bit about that. Uh, I, I, I missed the 2021 because mm-hmm. like, you know, all the things that you see, the videos and the press material and stuff like that, we were kind of like, ah, I was deciding it, should I submit? Should I not? Should I submit? Because like we were kind of crunching through like the media production during the January and February. Ah, I see. So, so we were not really ready to reveal it at that point. And so I say to them, yeah, no, we are, we are not doing it. Otherwise, we're going to end up churning like ugly videos and stuff like that. And we don't really want to do a review like that. Okay, yeah. It's okay. It's all right. Because you always get the next one. Oh, you, are, you are always have the next year. I wouldn't go anywhere. So, yeah. okay. So for those developers or publisher who listen to this podcast, you can also join. You can also join Play Prime twenty twenty two. You can submit your project, your your games, at uh, Play Prime Showcase at gmail dot com, and we can work it out. See, uh, it could be like a, it, you could be include your game could be included in the show. So that would be it for today. And don't forget to subscribe to Play Prime Showcase dot com, and uh, all things social media: Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Yeah, you can find us there. So that would be it for today. Thank you, Jay, for your time and your ga- show, show us your game here today. Very fascinating stuff. So I hope you come back someday and bring us some more news of Airship Academy or even new project. Yeah, it could be happening in the, in the future. So that's it. Thank you, everyone, for listening, and goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for having me. <laughs>